reaction of endothermic and exothermic reaction So it is a combination of arc and gas welding also. It is hydrogen gas, electrodes, and these are metal plates simple layout of atomic hydrogen welding hydrogen is first you convert first step is it is a mixture of exothermic and endothermic reaction what is exothermic exothermic means energy will release endothermic means energy required for reaction and also it is combination of gas and arc welding See here first you need you send the gas hydrogen gas from the hydrogen cylinder so that hydrogen gas is converted to hydrogen atom hydrogen atom which is endothermic reaction so you need energy for that so to input energy we use arc welding so with the help of electrodes the heat is generated so the with that heat the hydrogen uh, molecule is converting into hydrogen atom heat generated from arc welding is used as a heat source for endothermic reaction so we know that endothermic reaction is hydrogen molecule is converting into hydrogen atom so hydrogen atom is unstable so it again it again converts to hydrogen molecule so which is a exothermic reaction So 
so here large amount of heat is generated that large amount of heat is used as a heat source for welding or joining two metal plates which is used as a heat source for joining two plates so that's about uh, atomic hydrogen welding it is a special case of gas and combination of gas and arc welding and it has both endothermic and exothermic reactions in this application used to weld highly reactive materials like aluminium magnesium etc next is in gas welding we need to know about the basics of torch angle and about the flux from some other fundamentals torch angle next topic is torch angle so how we need to keep torch in the uh, what is the angle of torch in the gas welding at the beginning or at the end torch angle in gas welding so torch angle purpose is initially it has to be 90 degrees then once the you know welding is the melting molten metal melts melting starts then the angle has to be decreased suppose for example if i am joining two plates with gas welding plate a and plate b so the torch angle initially torch angle is 90 this is torch angle so this torch angle at the beginning has to be 90 degrees theta equal to 90 at the beginning of welding why we need to keep 90 degrees initially the temperature of the weld joint has to be increased from room temperature to melting point temperature melting point temperature melting point of that um, uh, p metal metals 
parts which are going to join melting point temperature the temperature of the weld joint has to be increased from room temperature to melting point temperature so we need to keep the angle at 90 degrees at when it uh, theta is 90 degrees the total flame concentration is on only very small area so if the area is small the heat will generated is more so that, that it can you know melt very fast so instead of that if you incline that flame so the area of exposure of the flame is more if the area is more the heat it is taking i mean the heat of the it takes a lot of time to melt that area entire area if the area is more the amount of heat is coming is same if the area is less it melts easy uh, very fast if the area is more it takes time for melting the molten uh, the pieces so in uh, gas welding as we have discussed that the parent metal melts that's why it is called so called fusion welding so angle of torch angle has to be 90 degrees maximum at the beginning and minimum at the middle and the end of the joining theta is minimum at middle and big and end end of the joint so once it converts from room temperature to melting point temperature then you can decrease the torch angle next is welding techniques there are different techniques first one is forehand technique it is also called left hand or left word so here the flame is directed towards non welded portion of the parent metal suppose if we take the same diagram which we have shown in above example so i am joining from this side flame is directed towards so flame is directed towards non welded portion flame is directed towards non welded portion of the metals the flame is directed towards non welded portion then it is called forehand technique it is used for welding small thickness plates so what is advantages so advantage is preheating takes place preheating takes place 
because of the flame directed towards non welded portion so because you know, preheating of the mold the plates joint preheating of the joint takes place due to that due to preheating it evaporates oil gas which are is present which help to remove oil gas and dust present on parent metal so that is a major advantage of uh, forehand technique application so for welding horizontal if the both plates are horizontal you can use forehand technique or backward technique backhand technique so one for welding vertical plates for welding vertical plates forehand technique is used so vertical plates are welded bottom to top so we need to use so if you are welding vertical joint then if you uh, know if the flame is directed towards the welded portion the molten melted the will fall down due to the gravity force so to avoid that we use forward technique or forehand technique which holds the molten metal without falling into the ground so these are the two vertical plates so the flame is directed towards non welded portion so this will hold the already welded portion molten metal without falling into the ground that is a advantage of the using forehand technique in vertical weldings if the plates are horizontal then you can use any technique next technique is backhand technique backhand technique here the flame is directed towards to the welded portion it is a reverse of the forehand technique the flame is directed towards welded portion of the joint what is advantage of backhand technique we know in forehand technique preheating takes place which removes all waste material gas or oil which creates defects in the welding joint so similarly advantage of advantage of backhand technique
post heating takes place so earlier pre heating now it is post heating after welding heat heating takes place which helps to relieve internal residual stresses in the joint to relieve internal residual stresses in the joint and to remove entrapped gases and to remove entrapped gases so these are the two advantages it also helps to increase the ductility and toughness which is a topic in heat treatment because post heating is a heat treatment process it is also a heat treatment process which improves mechanical properties so application it is used for overhead welding for it is used for welding overhead joint so if you want to join two pieces in ceiling then you have to go for backhand technique the flame is directed towards non welded portion so welded portion sorry so this is so overhead welding the flame is directed towards the flame is directed towards welded portion this well joint flame the stis flux so the use of flux flux is a metal powder which removes it helps to remove oxides in the well is used to remove oxides in weld which is also called deoxidizing agent it also protects 
weld bead from atmosphere contamination so this is a major purpose of flux next filler rod it is used to supply additional molten metal to weld bead so additional molten metal it is used to supply additional molten metal filler rod in gas welding that is the purpose next one is thermite welding or chemical welding so it is a oldest technique used in joining two metal plates it's also called exothermic welding so it is actually why it is used in it, it, it application is in remote areas for joining rails so thermite welding thermite is a mixture of aluminum and iron oxide powder thermite mixture aluminum and iron oxide fe2o3 in ratio of 1 is to 3 it is all it also called as goldsmith re reaction, reaction. goldsmith goldsmith reaction so what they do is this is actually as i mentioned you that to join rails in remote areas especially in hilly areas you can't take this gas welding equipment and uh, if where electricity is not there for uh, if you can go for uh, arc welding so you can't do arc welding and gas welding in remote areas uh, in hilly areas so in that case this is a chemical welding where near the joint you can keep a, you know surround a box in that box you fill the aluminum and iron oxide powder ignite that powder with match box and uh, which add some barium peroxide then it will ignite the you know mixture after some time the aluminum and iron oxide will melt form the joint barium peroxide is used to ignite the mixture application to join rails
in remote areas so this is a special welding technique where you, you need only just metal powder aluminum and uh, iron peroxide powder and barium peroxide you can join any type of metals